Does paying for your searches make literally any sense? That's what I'm gonna find out today as I review Kaji, who is a paid search engine with multiple tiers, none of which are free. So let's find out if this is worth it after a quick message from our sponsor. My thoughts, my ideas, and the things that happen throughout my day in my journal are things I really care about keeping safe. And that's where a tool like Notesnook is perfect. Notesnook is open source and, and encrypted, so not even they are able to see your data. And it's completely cross-platform on pretty much every device out there, including a web app. So as long as you have a web browser, you can access your notes. Their team is completely dedicated to your privacy and security and they have some incredible functionality to back it up, even be competitive to things like Obsidian, Notion, and other productivity tools. Notesnook really does try to combine the best of all worlds, which is giving you a usable experience that's competitive to other tools on the market, which is privacy respecting, and they even have a free option, so you can try it out to see if it works for you before going with them. Go ahead and try Notesnook down in the description, or check them out at the link here on the screen. To start with setting up, Kanji. You have to create an account. That's the first step. And we'll talk about that a little bit more down the road. In terms of setting it up in specific browsers, on desktop, I had to set it up on Molvad browser and Brave browser, both of which were perfectly easy to do, even in Molvad where it's ephemeral, meaning it's like in private mode all the time, essentially. On mobile, their documentation is super robust and it has setup instructions for pretty much every device and browser I can think of. Once you're set up, it's pretty awesome and they actually make it easier to switch to than some other search engines. Uh, at least their documentation is good, so awesome stuff. Now, probably the most important thing about a search engine is the results that you receive. And I gotta say, I'm super impressed. They're not perfect. I wouldn't actually put Kanji's search result quality above that of Google's, but I'm coming from Brave Search because I want something that's privacy respecting. And compared to Brave Search and especially DuckDuckGo, Kaji kind of blows them out of the water. So in terms of all the search engines I've used, personally, this is a super personal preference, Google's my favorite and it is for a lot of people. And then StartPage because it, it's Google results, just not really personalized because they're privacy respecting. But I think Kaji's right up there despite not being entirely Google. Now, in terms of features, uh, I use something called Bangs with my search engine. What you can do is if you have an issue with a search, um, you can go ahead and just add a bang, which is essentially just a letter and an exclamation mark. And what this does is it tells Kaji or whatever search engine to redirect the search to a different search engine. For all of these, if you do G exclamation mark, it'll redirect the search to Google. If you do uh, YT exclamation mark, it'll redirect to YouTube. If you do A or AM, it'll redirect to Amazon. If you have your search engine set in your Omni bar, it allows you to have access to hundreds of search engines directly from your Omni bar. So you don't have to go to youtube.com and then search, you just, well, search and add YT exclamation mark. And that's how you find us here at TechLore. Now, something I also really like about Kaji is they offer a lot of customization with your search results. You can actually almost derank or extra rank certain web results uh, within Kaji uh, on every web search that you do. You can also go into your settings and there's a lot of great settings in here and you can go in here and you can actually mark different things. Like some of these will prioritize smaller content creators that aren't uh, from big media companies. You can prioritize forums. Um, you can really change the quality of your search that's ultra personalized to you. And I think that's really powerful. And I don't think it's something I would do because I'm not spending all my time trying to fully optimize my search. But the fact that it exists, I think is actually really cool. And I know some people will really appreciate that. One important mention on search quality, Kaji's proudly anti-censorship, which in some contexts brings up interesting ethical concerns. So definitely something that some people uh, have opinions on and you should explore for yourself as well. Now, before we talk about why this is a subscription and if it's even worth it, and if it's something I'm going to continue paying for, I gotta talk about privacy and security. So one of the reasons why I don't use Google, if not the only reason I don't use Google at this point in time is because it's not privacy friendly whatsoever. Google's entire point of existing is the fact that they sell you ads and they don't sell you those ads randomly. They are very personalized and your Google account tells a lot about you and they abuse that in many ways. So whether you use DuckDuckGo, if you use Brave Search, if you use StartPage, if you use any 
other private search engine with an emphasis on privacy, you're going to be significantly better off. Kaji has MFA, they have a strong privacy policy, and I'm pretty impressed with how forward they are with things, and it makes sense that they are because they have a paid business model that doesn't rely on your data. So props to them for having that. I think that's super cool. Now, one big hiccup here for people who are cons concerned about privacy, it's not the most anonymous service. Now, anonymity means that you just blend in with everybody else using it. That's not really possible because Kaji is account-based. So no matter what, you're gonna have to set up an account with an email and with a payment method. But on the bright side, they specifically advertise the fact that they're compatible with simple login and they encourage you to use email aliases, which is awesome and they support things like cryptocurrency to keep things a little bit more pseudo anonymous if you really want to take that route overall though great privacy not as good as some other providers but great privacy and i think that deserves two thumbs up so i want to answer the question in this video is paying for a search engine worth it for me the selling points of kanji are the fact that it's privacy focused it's ad free and gives me a focused experience with my search engine and it's a ethical company that offers me an alternative to big tech. Of those three things, I can find two of them for free. Here's the thing, they have multiple subscription options. If it was $5 a month and this plan worked for me, I actually think I would because $5 a month is a reasonable amount of money. The problem is 300 searches is not enough for me. They say that most people don't hit this, but I find that actually kind of hard to believe myself for those who are wondering, that's 10 searches a day. I think if it was something like maybe 500 searches a month for $5, that would be cool. And hey, it's five and five. Um, so I think $10 a month is a big ask for somebody like me and for a lot of people who are already paying for a lot of subscriptions. I think Kanji's directly targeting Google users. I think there is where they have their best selling point. But when you compare them to other search engines that exist, like Startpage, like Brave Search, like DuckDuckGo, and like many other private search engines, I think it starts to slowly chip away at the selling points of using something like Kaji. Good product, I just don't think it's for me, but I know it's for a lot of people. So what do you think? Would you pay for a search engine? Would you pay for Kaji? If it was less, are you more likely to? Would love to hear your thoughts down in the description. And I wanna thank our sponsor, Notesnook, for making this content possible. And I wanna thank all of our supporters who are individually making this content possible on Patreon. You can join them down below at patreon.com slash techlore. And if you wanna check out more takes on search engines, I shared my entire search engine journey of what I started with and what I ended up with here in this video. Check out that video to learn about that, and I'll see you next time on TechLore.